So lately I've been thinking that I've got more in common with James Bond than one might think. I've got the watch. I've got the killer weapon. And just like James, I haven't got the time to spy on my competitors. <laughs> time to sp No time to spy. No time to die. Anyway, bad puns aside, today we're going to take a look at how to use Browse.ai to spy on our competitors on autopilot. And more than that, automate a lot of the boring, tedious copy-pasting that some of our clients need to do on a weekly basis because they like to track the prices of uh, currencies or they need to track the prices of certain real estate areas, you name it. Browse.ai is an interesting tool. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. All right, so we're going to start things off as we usually do, and that is by showing you how it works. So right now I have got my Airtable database over here where I am going to be tracking uh, my friend Dan's videos. And yeah, let's uh, kick things off. Of course, this thing can be done manually like I'm going to do now, but technically this thing monitors Dan's channel every day. So I'm going to trigger this uh, once. So here we go. It's starting um, the task. It says the task is in queue. Let's wait for it. It takes about a minute to actually perform everything. And after a short time, you'll see how it will now start to populate our um, database over here. Navigating, simulating user actions. Now, of course, this is going to run every day we have set up a monitor here where it monitors this every day at 11 20 and yeah it just pulls data in now that we've seen this in action let's take a look at how to set this up for another competitor uh, a friend of mine and yeah hopefully you'll see how easy this is hey just a quick note we're trying to reach 3,000 subscribers by the end of this year so it would really really help us out if you could please subscribe to the channel now and don't forget to ring that bell icon so that you don't miss any future uploads. Thank you so much for helping us out. Now, let's get back to the video. So, the first thing that you need to do to set this whole thing up is, of course, sign up for Browse.ai. Once you arrive at this beautiful little dashboard, uh, we can begin with Build New Robot. I'm going to click here and then Extract Structured Data. From there, all I need to do is just paste the URL of the channel that I want to spy on Jared. I'm joking, but Gareth is an awesome dude. But yeah, let's say we want to spy on Gareth's videos. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in. Now, as you can see, uh, Browse.ai is giving me uh, some pre-built robots. Now I want, and there's some awesome users and we're going to paste the URL um, over here. Now you can start training the robot yourself, but I would strongly suggest to use one of the pre-built robots. Uh, and in this case, I need to use extract videos from a YouTube channel. So I'm going to select that. Then again, it's asking me to paste the channel URL again. Max videos, let's say I want to pull 10 every single time. Start extracting. And now it's doing the extraction for the first time. It will take a few minutes to complete this. And you can see how it's sim simulating user actions. And after a few seconds, you'll see how it will pull the uh, data that we need. And here we go. From here, the next thing that I personally like to do is to set up a monitor. So here, basically, we can click on create new monitor. And I want it to run once a day, all the days of the week. I want it to run specifically at 11, 11, 11 in the morning. Max videos 10, default monitor. That's completely fine. And that's all well and good. Press save. And that's it. Now this task will run automatically. You will not have to trigger this yourself. It will just check Gareth's page once a day at 11, 11, 11. Now the next step, of course, is to integrate this whole thing with your tool of choice. In our case, it's going to be Airtable for the moment, but you can use anything you like. Google Sheets, Fibery, you name it. Let's take a look at how that's done. So we're using make.com to facilitate this transfer of data from browse.ai to Airtable. And the setup couldn't have been easier. So the first thing that you need to do is obviously sign up for make.com and create a new scenario just like I have done here. Now, the first module is one that is watch task execution finished. So 
let's open up this thing and you'll need to select this particular task. Once you select it, and I'm just going to create one over here, just select it, add a hook, um, watch tasks webhook, uh, just make sure that there is a connection uh, there. You can choose a robot. It doesn't really matter that much in this particular case because we're going to be reusing this scenario for multiple robots of the same kind. So in this case, just set up one of your robots. Um, I had set up Dance, but now we can set up uh, Garrus as well. So choose the robot, event task finished, and press save. That is going to generate a new hook, and that's it. Now, I have already uh, created one from earlier, right? This one. And all I have to do in order to reuse it basically is show the address, copy this to clipboard, open up my robot that I just created for Gareth's channel and jump into integrate, click on webhooks. Is this it? Well, technically I will remove this one, whatever this was, paste my webhook, task is finished, add new webhook. That's it. You don't really need to do anything else. Now, the rest of the scenario is actually quite easy to set up. From here, we have an iterator for uh, step number three, or module number three, rather. And what we have here, we have the captured lists videos, right? So over here from module number two, we are mapping the videos array. From there, as soon as that array gets mapped, we get all of our videos. And this is, I think, Dan's videos, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not super sure. Probably doesn't matter. Bottom line is that this array, as soon as it unfurls, it gives us all uh, of the data for each individual video that browse.ai captures. So here, the next step is to actually check against that video URL because I want to make sure that when it's something new, I create a new row in Airtable. When it's something that I already know about, I just update the existing data. Simple as that. Uh, so yeah, I'm just basically checking my table. My formula is video URL is equal to the link of the video. Basically video URL, this fight, this field matches the link that I get from browse.ai and limit is one. Simple as that. Then we have two choices, right? Two scenarios, so to speak. We have one scenario when we actually don't find anything and we need to add a new video or rather a new row inside of our database. Or the other scenario is where the number of bundles is not equal to zero, which basically means that we've found an already existing video in our database and we just need to update its stats. Maybe there's more views, maybe, I don't know, something. So the rest of this is set up in a very similar manner. So I'm in the case where I'm creating a new row, I'm just adding the status the duration, everything that I basically get from um, array iterator, I just map that in. Then I also map the input parameters origin URL because I want to track which account it was that um, that this video is from. Then we have uh, the video title, the, the link and the views, all of this coming from the iterator. Same thing goes for updating a record. It's exactly the same, only that here I map the ID that I get from my search because I basically found that video. I just want to update um, its um, parameters. So here I'm just going to save this and I'm going to run this once and we're going to run the, the task right now together so that you'll see how it will pull Gareth's uh, videos inside of our database. So here we go. Right now we don't have anything. Um, it hasn't triggered make yet this is just spinning up a new server in the cloud and we should have our results populate in a few seconds and we've got our 10 videos how easy was that now of course you can do this for other things now of course you can do this for other things you can create other robots for other services i would strongly suggest especially if you're somebody who's in real estate you're probably using something like zillow browse pre-built robots and you can just scrolled to the very bottom here is zillow extract list of properties from zillow use this automation and all you have to do is just give it a zillow link like this one for instance 
And if I open this up, you'll see how it basically filters down to uh, Washington state. Let's say I wanna go for Manhattan. Uh, you can add any kind of filters that you might want and then just save this particular search URL. Copy this and paste it in here. Next step, start extracting and it will start doing the same process. Now you're gonna have to set up another monitor and you're gonna have to set up another integration using a different webhook but the process is basically the same. So do check out the templates. They are super useful and they are updated every month as far as I'm aware. So yeah, simple as that. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this particular video on browse.ai. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any other ideas for browse.ai and if there are a few interesting ones, I might consider doing a video on them. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.